What's up, everyone? Do you want to find out how you can win this surprise mystery box from Sci-Fi Channel? Click the link below to find out. Anyway, I'm going to throw this over here. And now it's time for Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Michelle Alexandria here, coming at you with the review of Spider-Man Homecoming. The movie comes out July 7th, and I got a chance to check it out last week. And already, all the critics are raving about it. Um, I'm not gonna rave. I like the movie a lot, but it just it falls just short of being a perfect Spider-Man movie. One of the problems with Spider-Man is that Spider-Man and Peter Parker are two completely different characters, and it's really hard to get both characters right. Spider-Man is Peter's alter ego. Ergo, he's not like Peter Parker at all. Spider-Man is brash, cocky, confident. Um, even though on the inside he's not confident at all because he still knows he's like a teenager in a mask taking on all these evil bad guys. But the, the film franchises have never really gotten both parts correct. And here again, the film falls apart with the Spider-Man bits. It, because what they do is basically they just put Peter Parker in a mask and have him go at it as Spider-Man, but there's no distinction between the two characters at all. And that kind of bugged me throughout the movie, but more on that later. Um, what the movie nails absolutely perfectly is the casting and Tom Holland as Peter Parker and the character of Peter Parker. This is probably one of the best uh, Peter Parker characters I've seen on film since probably Spider-Man 2. I would still say Spider-Man 2 is the better overall Spider-Man movie, but this is right up there with it. And everyone knows how much I adore Spider-Man 2 versus how much I loathe Spider-Man 1. But anyway, uh, Homecoming is amazing. I love the cast. The story is, it's an origin story without being an origin story, and it doesn't it doesn't do the winking and nodding thing either. It, it tells, it's basically, it, the movie acts as if Spider-Man always existed, and really he has. Even, even, even though like the events of, of the Avengers movie took place eight years ago in the Spider-Man timeline, which probably would have made Spider-Man, what, eight years old or something, um, or seven actually, when, that, when those events happened. He's always been there, and the world is a bit, much bigger world. Um, where everything is part of the internet, interconnected Marvel Universe and Marvel was like really hammered that home so often in this movie that yes, it's part of the bigger scheme, larger scheme of things. Even from the fact that you have Captain America putting in appearances, playing basically the role of like the Simpsons, um, um, my McClure character, I think his name was, um, and it's really hysterical. All the Captain America videos that they show of him in school. He's basically like the driving instructor. He's the he's the Mark McClure character from The Simpsons, essentially, um, providing comic relief in those little uh, gov dry government videos you have to watch when you're in high school. It's really funny, and part of the reason why the film works is that they cast real kid. kind Characters who you would think would be real high school kids in Brooklyn. It's not like a, a CW school or a school in like a modern uh, teenage film where everyone's unreasonably beautiful and white and perfect and everything else. No, this school, the school Peter Parker attends could be a school down the street from me. It's, it's a nice real world melting pot of a school with people at different income levels kind of mingling together. And the school doesn't look all, the school doesn't look run down, but it also doesn't look pristine and clean either. It just kind of looks like it's there. And I love the fact that they use like real sets because it just makes everything stand out. The banter between Steve, between Peter Parker and his best friend um, Ned Leeds is flawless and I love the fact that they went with a different type of Ned Leeds and a different type of Flash and, the, and it's really funny because the movie does a great job with establishing its mystery throughout and the mystery was a simple mystery it's like who are these people playing and the film tries to be cute about it um, I'm not one who actually does a lot of research before I go see a movie. I like to go in as cold as possible and be pleasantly surprised. As I sit there and watch the character, the unveilings, uh, plot points and everything. So if you go in spoiled, you're just going to be spoiled. But the movie really goes painfully out of its way not to name the two female characters. The character, the character Zendaya plays. Zendaya plays in the, in the other female lead. I don't know her name. I don't want to look at my iPad to find 
find her name, I'm sorry, but it's really brilliant the way they do it because they don't tell you who her name who her name is until about 40 minutes into the movie, and then the Zendaya character is actually not mentioned until the ve her name isn't mentioned until the very end, and it may or may not be who you think it is. I'm trying not to spoil it, but it, it becomes pain painfully obvious who she is, probably within 15, 20 minutes of the movie, but it does an amazing job of actually like keeping it under wraps, and she doesn't even say her name to the very end. And normally I'm like, oh, come on, are you really trying to turn this into a mystery? But I actually didn't know who she was, because she could have been anyone, any one of uh, Peter's babes, because Peter had, can pull some tail when he wants to. He disappoints all the time, but he can pull the tail when he wants to. In the movie, despite all the trailers, the movie, the storyline, does a, there's still a lot of surprises in this movie if you don't try to spoil yourself. Um, there are a lot of surprises. There's a great reveal towards the end where you're like, oh my god, I did not I did not see that coming. There's some stuff with the shocker that was shocking and great. The cast is amazing. I love Zendaya. She's great. Uh, Tom Holland is an amazing Peter Parker. He really is. And I also really loved uh, Bokeem Washington. I love him so Bokeem and he's amazing in this. But the real standout is actually Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton steals this movie. If you want to know how to write a proper villain, this is it. Um, because it's, it, this is a fully fleshed out character that Michael Keaton is playing. The Vulture feels like a three-dimensional character and just a character who who's not a villain because he wants to be or a villain because he's just a maniacal mustache trolling villain. No, he's kind of pushed into it and he discovers what he's good at. But at the same by the same token, he's not going out of his way to be showy because as he keeps saying in the movie, he wants to stay under the way, radar. He doesn't want to attract the attention of the Avengers or any of the capes or anything. He wants to stay hidden under the radar, run his business, support his family, and keep it moving without getting interfered with anything. But the problem is spider mans out there and he starts interfering in his business and at one point he's like, I I spent all this I spent eight years building this business. No one knows I existed and then, you know, you this punk comes in and ruins everything. And the anger and the fire in Michael Keaton and his voice and his face scared the crap out of me. I mean, Michael Keaton is really intense in this movie and in a good way. I, I think if they gave, if there was a chance in heck that he would get a supporting Oscar nomination, he should because this is one of the best um, performances I've seen, supporting performances I've seen all year. And there's this amazingly tense sequence between him and and Tom Holland when he and it's in the trailers. I'm not spoiling anything where he's like, I will destroy everything you care about. Don't mess with me, kid. And they're looking his eyes and they're looking Tom Holland's face when he says that. Oh my God, that is so tense and so amazing. So all of that stuff with the movie is uh, incredible. John Watts does an amazing job with that. It, he balanced, the director John Watts does a stunning job. He balances the humor with the seriousness of everything. He balances the high school stuff, the superhero, it's really well. The action sequences aren't super memorable, but they're really solid. And they're not memorable because the trailers ruined everything. The trailers ruined most of the Spider-Man bits. And there really aren't that many Spider-Man bits in this movie. And I didn't really like the Spider-Man bits much at all because A, the trailers ruined everything. But I also thought the CG, the CGI or stunt work just didn't look all that good to me. Especially on a big IMAX screen, Spider-Man looked like a small speck running against stuff. And they actually didn't have a web swinging too much because maybe they realized the CGI just wasn't working. So half the time, they had him out in the suburbs running around, kind of like swinging around trees, but never through buildings. And at one point, he's actually in a car driving somewhere, and then he's flying, he's, he's climbing up the Washington Monument. But you rarely see him like just swinging through like the New York skyline like you normally do, which is was also really refreshing. Plus, I thought it sucked when they did do it. It looked pretty crappy. And my problem with the Spider-Man character was they didn't make him distinct from Peter Parker. It, it was basically you never got over the fact that hey, it's Peter Parker in the suit. It was the same. He was the same insecure person in the mask. Uh, with the kid voice as he was in the suit. I love Danny, so that kind of bugged me a little bit. The other thing that bugged me was to use the Tony Stark in this movie. I'm frankly tired of Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. I loved him in the beginning, but now the stick is just kind of old. And I really hated 
hated the fact that most of the stuff that we know about Spider-Man basically now was given to um, him by Tony Stark. So it seemed like Spider-Man didn't have any, Tom Holland had no initiative on his own without Tony Stark giving it to him. So for everything from the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man part to the web shooters, it was like it was all courtesy of Tony Stark. And I thought that diminished, completely diminished um, Tom Peter Parker a lot. I mean, they do show Peter Parker actually building his own, his own web shooters um, and doing the chemistry to build them, but the problem was the suit already had him, so I was kind of confused as to if the suit, if he was inspired by the suit, or if Tony Stark maybe took his idea and put it into the suit. And I also didn't like the, I, part of me hated the suit because it became a crotch in there, dressed out in the movie, but part of me also loved the suit. It was just kind of really cool looking. It was a cool acting suit and did a lot of stuff. But I miss, I really miss the blue tights. But then on a, another thought was, I would miss the suit too. So I was kind of torn. I was all over the place in that. Danny Glover was really funny in this. He's really good. Um, and we all know of his love for Spider-Man and how much he really desperately wants to be in the Spider-Man movie. So this is Danny Glover's chance to be in one. And he does a really good job. And they do, and the way Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2 fell is that those two movies were too focused on trying to like, Push, push their universe forward, and they were too focused on like presenting ideas and things that will be coming up in future movies instead of focusing on the plot of the movie, uh, the story they were trying to tell in that one movie. With this movie, they get that part right where they set up the future of the franchise and set up the the sinister six pretty well, but they don't beat your head over the. They don't beat you over the head with it. They're like, hey, look over here, it's the shocker. Look over here, it's the vulture. Or all this other stuff. No, they do it really suck. Su they're really subtle about it. Where basically, if you know you're Spider-Man, then you can go, oh, that's really cool the way they did that. But it's not, hey, screaming, look over here. Look at the Dr. Octopus costume right here. No, they didn't do any of that kind of stuff in this movie. So uh, overall, I would say this is one of Marvel's best movies. And you know, I'm, I'm kind of mixed on the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm not as a B to the W, you know, Marvel can't do ro no wrong uh, fan of the universe. They've done plenty of wrong. I'm not a fan of the third movies. I'm not a fan of the first two, Cap of the first Captain America movie. Um, I'm not a fan of the Iron Man 2 and 3, but they really nailed it this time. They really got it. It got most of it right. It's a lot of fun. It's well worth your time. In the Spider-Man scale, I would say it's probably a few steps down from being the greatness that was Spider-Man 2, the, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2, but this is really good. It's solid. It's fun. Thumb up. Definitely go see it.